Hi, I um, wanted to share my solution on how to get steering wheels control working. Uh, this is a Jaguar X-Type 2005. What this uses is a, a step resistor. Um, so there's only one wire going to all of the controls. Uh, but I still want to be able to map them and use them. So right now, for instance, I've mapped this one to play pause, volume, uh, next and between, or uh, next and back, and the uh, Google Assistant. As you can see, all the buttons work, play pause, next, previous, and Google Assistant. Navigate home. Navigating to home. Stop navigating. On the website support.google.com, they say. Okay, so there's still some improvement for the sound recognition. Maybe I need a different microphone. Um, anyway, I'll unblock this one. Um, so I'm running a crankshaft as a distribution of open auto. Uh, and to get behind the panel, there's a whole bunch of wires. Um, basically what I use to get the steering wheel controls working is this connected directly to an Arduino micro right here. And the micro sends USB commands to the Pi, but it also sends a GPIO commands for some other stuff. Yeah, so let me turn off the ignition. So it's off. Uh, get this out of the way. So basically the Arduino micro here has like a little board uh, you need a specific chip, I'll uh, post that in the image which one you need, uh, to send USB commands. And um, these pins at the front here are for the GPIO. So to make it a little bit easier, I'll just remove those. And get a little bit of the wiring out here so you can see it. It's still a work in progress. You have the wiring to the car with all the speaker wires, controls, uh, lighting, uh, mains power, switched power, ground, basically everything you need for such a project. And I found that for the schematics of this X-Type, there's also a little wire, uh, which is this orange one, but then on this side, of course, that goes to the steering wheel controls. It's actually the input for the steering wheel controls. Um, and then when it goes to the steering wheel, there's a wire that goes to ground of the car and it's really hard to reach. I did not want to fiddle with that one. Turns out I didn't have to. All I needed was a single wire that's connected to the step resistor. You want to use the ground. You want to use an analog reader. I used A0 here. That's going to be the input. And what you want to do is you want to use the uh, volt out. It doesn't really matter if you use three volts or five volts, um, because we're gonna measure the resistance and we have to calibrate the device anyway. Before we hook up to the car, we have a little voltage divider. I'll explain that a little bit more detail later on. And this voltage divider takes the red wire with a constant voltage, puts it into a little resistor. It doesn't really matter which one, as long as you know the value. And then it has two different outputs. So it splits. One goes to the analog in and the other one goes into the steering wheel control in this way. So what I recommend doing is not to actually cut in the wires of your car but is to get a wire harness so you can safely cut in all the wires. So as you can see all the other wires I've bundled them here. Most are them for speaker cables throughout the car going through all the different speakers and I didn't have to cut in any of the car's wiring. I just cut into the harness which was about 15 euros. So after that's done, this will actually feed the power through the resistor and based on which resistor allows the power to flow through, the voltage divider will allow me to actually read a different analog in from the blue wire. And I'll show you a little script that I made to actually control this and uh, convert the uh, the analog input into some USB commands and into some GPIO commands, depending on what you want to do. All right, so I've switched the, the micro SD card with a Linux distribution, and here you can see the Arduino code that uh, runs uh, on the little machine behind here. And it's really not that difficult. 
um, basically what it does is it uh, reads the input in a loop and it checks if it's between like two certain values and if it is between two certain values long enough then it'll send a key press or actually it'll hold the key press until you release it so what that looks like I can go to the monitor you get a value between a zero and about a thousand and it's just connected at 980 and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to press this button and as soon as I press the button it'll check for a value between a certain range and if it's there long enough I think it's about five or ten times it'll stop the loop and it'll send the button press so there you go you can see that it's detecting a value between a range uh, it checks to make sure for a little while and it all happens within about 10 milliseconds and as soon as the button press uh, will help for long enough it'll send a certain action in this case it's pressing USB button 66 so that means it's a certain character and then if I release it it'll immediately go back if I press a different button you can see it's a different USB button type 77 I can try one of the uh, volume rockers which is actually through GPIO if I'm not uh, mistaken yeah so here you can see volume up goes to GPIO, bo GPIO button 2 and volume down goes to button 3. You can change the mapping to whatever you like. I'll quickly show you. Uh, so this is the entire thing that you can change. You give the range as the first two parameters. The third parameter is whether you use the GPIO pins or you want to use the USB. And the fourth one is either, depending on this one, the GPIO pin that you're using or the ASCII character for a button press that you want to use. Um, so that's it. Also it might be nice to know what I actually did for the GPIO. So for the GPIO, whenever I get a signal and I want to set, send a certain command to the Raspberry Pi to open auto, what I do is I take one of the GPIO pins from the Arduino and what I want to do is I want to short the wire for a certain command with ground and I've created a little board so that I can control those because it's not wise to hook them up directly. It'll not work because they uh, they don't really uh, share any circuitry. Um, that's what I did. So I created this monstrosity. Uh, I'm only using two of them at the moment, but I thought I might as well just make a little bit more. All this is is uh, from the Arduino on the one side and going to the Pi on the other side and they're completely disconnected from each other uh, by use of a, an optocoupler. So basically, once you short one end, the other end will also allow electricity to flow. So I have a little connector with a resistor going inside, and on the other side, it'll be connected to ground. So you can see here, they're all connected at the end. The same happens on the other side, the ground for the Raspberry Pi and the two uh, inputs and they'll only be connected when the Arduino is connected.